So what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. Oh. You can see right here, the market says this phone is still worth around $200. Um, $0 if you want to pick one up <laughs> at Carriers. Yeah, $0. But the fact that you can even sell this for anything now just proves that iPhones hold their resale. Try to sell an Android phone right now on the streets from four years ago and tell me how much you're going to get because it's not going to be a lot. Um, just, just being honest, I have plenty of Android phones. I try to sell them when they're years old. I get like 30 bucks for them. So this is a pretty good resale right now. And when the iPhone 11 initially launched, it actually cost around the same as the current iPhone 15. You can see this is when we had the rounded edges and we do have now a diagonal camera versus a vertical camera on the older iPhone. Let me know which one you prefer the vertical camera or the diagonal, because I, I'm hearing rumors the iPhone 16 is going back to a vertical. We'll see if that becomes true. Let me know down below in the comments what you prefer. So further exploring the design four years later, I can tell you that it still feels like a tank. There's a very big, thick, you know, aluminum band around this phone. This phone just feels like it, it's just so strong to hold in the hand. And the back is glass, of course, so that can easily crack if you drop it on the right angle. But the camera lenses didn't stick off the body too much. Again, super strong on the edges with that aluminum. Nice chunky power button right there. Chunky volume rockers. A lot of people actually had this phone and kept it a very long time. So the iPhone 11 to me in design right now actually still feels and looks pretty nice even though it's four years old. Although it definitely feels dated when you compare it to a newer iPhone. Once you get over the hype train and everything that's new, you could pick this up and still gladly use this in 2023, going into 2024 without thinking you're using some piece of junk. That's for sure. So the display in 2023, December, going into 2024 is bezel huge. That's just <laughs> huge bezels. That's where I want to go with this one. You could see it's super noticeable when you stack it up. However, for some reason, Dynamic Island still draws my eye a lot more than Notch. So Notch days, while not over, because they're still in the form of Dynamic Island, they are definitely less, um, it just kind of draws your eyes a little bit less as you're scrolling. However, the biggest change is they went to OLED. So over here on the iPhone 11, look at those viewing angles. They are absolutely atrocious compared to the 15 or even the 12 or the 13. Um, so definitely, or the 14. So the iPhone 11's display has been upgraded multiple times. However, there is still a big pro to having an LCD screen. Um, it's not for a lot of people, but it's lack of PWM or pulse with modulation. I've mentioned that before, but the iPhone 11 still retains one of the easiest on the eye displays. And considering that most of your computers, laptops, um, and many people's tablets still rock LCD or IPS panels like the iPhone 11, the transition for your eyes don't have to adjust to an OLED screen, to an LCD LCD screen, to an OLED screen. You get the point. Even your TV might be LCD. So I like how there's a consistency within the iPhone 11's display. Um, it's still bright and it's still a nice display. It doesn't look like crappy or old or anything like that. It just definitely doesn't look as vibrant and premium as the iPhone 15 with its nice reduction in bezels, the dynamic island. This is like the new kid on the block, the new fancy thing around, but it's nothing over the top that, you know, we haven't seen before. It's just the iPhone 11, yeah. The display is definitely something probably needs upgrading. If you've had this a while, you'll probably appreciate having an upgrade now. And four years later, the software has not skipped a beat. We're on the same software as iPhone 15. And besides the fact that you have a couple new camera features in 15, you're rocking the same software. And because they both have 60 Hertz, when you're scrolling through the home screens, when you're generally operating iOS, it doesn't feel any different at all. That's pretty cool. Um, if you have an iPhone 11 to know that you're having basically the same experience as people who have the brand new iPhone 15 in their hand. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of sad though, that the iPhone 15 doesn't feel snappier with its software due to the lack of 90 or 120 Hertz. But the iPhone 11, if you're still going to use this for a little while, you're still saving up for your next purchase. It still rocks out pretty fine on iOS 17.2, operates pretty amazingly well, considering this phone is four years old and it's using a software that's from right now. So I really like how Apple has been doing good with their older iPhones 
lately with 17. And in the area of performance, the iPhone 11 is actually still quite good. It, it doesn't really slow you down in day-to-day -day app openings um, unless you have connectivity issues. Other than that, it really doesn't have too much of a problem, I would say, with just basic general tasking. Now, what I will say is I've noticed is that the animation speeds, the scrolling speed, still 60 hertz, so, you know, it kind of feels dated in that respect, just like the 15 with its 60 hertz. But generally, it can launch most of the games, it can play most of the games, it can do most of the things iPhone users do on the day-to-day. -day. So, Apple has stayed true to their word, keeping this thing updated for quite the time. And I gotta say that, I just don't think if, like, you've been waiting, you're, like, you're saving up to get another iPhone, you have this phone... I don't think you're going to have a major issue for the next several months. You could easily rock out with this. Let me know if you agree if you're an iPhone 11 user down below, because this wouldn't really slow me down in terms of my day-to-day -day iPhone usage even now. Although, it definitely doesn't feel as snappy. Animations aren't as quick. It still is not like end of the world, like I can't use a phone because this is, I can't use the phone because it's that bad. It's not even close to that. So, this Apple A13 Bionic chip held its own, and it does have the four gigabytes of RAM, which was up from the 10R, which is definitely needed. So even when you hop through apps, it can hold a little bit more in the background than what the iPhone 10R was capable of. The cameras are, at this point, they're fine. Now I did a tutorial on this camera a long time ago, um, so we covered everything about it, but this has ultra wide, it has a decent zoom up to five times, although that digital crop is quite blurry. Again, I covered this in multiple reviews before, but the 4K video is actually still stellar in 2023. We haven't got to 8K or anything like that on iPhones. The main thing that improved is the HDR footage, the actual quality, um, cinematic type videos and stuff like that came. But the general 4K 60, if you were to post that right now on social media, it would look pretty amazing. As would even the 1080 version. Everything about this camera is just consumer friendly. It's still very good. Um, so yeah, a Apple definitely nailed it with this camera. Very, they nailed the basics. There's nothing about it that's overly sharp, overly crazy, but everything about it is just great for social media posting and daily memories. If you want to record and take photos of family and friends and objects and things and places, and you know the drill. Pretty good cameras. They're fine right now, four years later. And to give you a few photo samples, you can see here are some results I took with the iPhone 11. And you'll see it can definitely produce some really good results. Even the sky looks good. Right now, I can tell you that the, like when you zoom in, you could see that right there. I mean, when you start pixel peeping, it got better in 2023 for sure. Like the buildings are much sharper now on newer iPhones, even when you zoom in. So they've really improved that aspect. But from a general, just looking at the picture, most are going to be pretty happy. It's still a generally a nice photo. And you'll see when you zoom in, a little bit more detail here, but as you get closer, the noise is pretty apparent. But again, that's when you start pixel peeping and zooming in. It's a pretty solid um, camera overall. Now, battery life is one of those things that it, it really depends on your capacity. So if you have 100% capacity, it'll last longer. Generally, I will say that it definitely drains faster on iOS 17 than when it first came out. Of course, that would be the case. But it's still an all-day phone. It really is with moderate use. When you start dipping into heavy use, you might be charging this middle to late part of the day. Um, and the thing about this is that you can run low power mode because of 60 hertz all day and get even longer battery life. And it wouldn't really change the experience too much. Um, so, yeah, the battery life is okay. It's not great anymore. It once was great, but if you're looking for more battery life, you'll want to consider one of the 14 Pluses or the iPhone 15 Pluses. Those would be major battery upgrades for you. Um, the 15 would be much better too, but if you really want that increase, go to a plus model, you'll really enjoy so it. So we're gonna cover a couple things here. Charging and audio. Charging on this phone, still lightning port, so you probably have a lot of those, but the audio is um, pretty good as well. It's just not as crisp and loud as newer phones. And what I mean is by that is when you crank up the volume here, so crank it all the way up. At the higher pitches, the iPhone 15 has been greatly improved as well as the, like when you hear people on speakerphone, it's louder, stuff like that. Um, but this is still functional. That's how I would look, that's how I look at it now. It works, it's functional, but it doesn't impress me or anything like that. But this does not impress me either, a lightning port. It's pretty slow charging, but 
It does have wireless charging. No MagSafe on the 11, though, so that's behind as well. Overall, this connectivity stuff is kind of last generation at this point. But the biggest con to the iPhone 11 was that it didn't have the best signal strength as well as 5G performance. It was kind of behind in that respect. So, you know, if you got the 12, if you just waited a year later, you have better connectivity. All that didn't have great battery life. That's why I think the 13 was such the king. Had 5G, had great signal strength, had everything you wanted in an iPhone. It was a $700 price point. Uh, the 13 was an amazing iPhone option. The 11 was amazing for its time, but it quickly got, you know, superseded by that iPhone 13. But the main thing, that's the main thing holding this back is the 5G, because the 13 still had four gigs of RAM, but this iPhone 11 can still handle the demands of pretty much daily usage. I wouldn't say it can handle all the latest heavy title graphical games. It can't handle heavy workloads, but it's practical enough. Like if you, you go to the Apple store, there are probably people using iPhone 11s to check you out, uh, maybe. Um, you, you could give this to, you know, as an employee work phone still, um, just to do, just to do some basic stuff. It's easily can handle that stuff. So pretty decent. Um, four years later though, this phone continues to impress me. It has stood the test of time. It's like the Toyota, the phone world right here, the iPhone 11, uh, just last and last and last with reliable service and quality. So iPhone 11, huge thumbs up. Um, I really appreciated this product. It was really good. And if you still have one, I think you can hold out a little bit longer. If you want, you can. If you don't, the 15 is a massive upgrade. And if that's too high for you, I would consider uh, recommending an iPhone 13, 13 Pro Max, or even a 14 Plus for more battery life. Those would be nice upgrades as well. But if you really want to wait it out, the iPhone 16 models will be even bigger upgrades because they're rumored to go to the bigger screen. These didn't, they still haven't gone to the bigger screen. It's just a bezel-less version of it with the 15. So thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on iPhone 11 four years later. Nick here. I will catch you all in the very next episode. Thank you very much for watching and peace.